HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church. Shout out to the Chalam family. We bless everybody in the name of Ahaya. Um, we greet you all. This is Hebrew Readers Church. Uh, we have a great lesson for you. The journey is a battle. Must bear fruit. And especially in the times that we're in and everything that's going on, uh, we definitely wanted to touch on this lesson, especially with prophecy and everything that's going on in motion as we speak today and the things that are to come. So, it's a must lesson for the times that we're in, and it's going to be very informational. I'm sure everybody's going to enjoy this lesson. Um, we greet you, all the people that stay tuned with us. We thank you. We praise the higher for you. And all the new people that are coming on and watching for the first time, we greet you, and we thank you for tuning in to us. And please subscribe. Um, Brother Casa. All right. So here in these end times, the agenda to bring the people to the point of depression and then provoke the race war is well underway here in America through COVID and the recent attacks on the citizens to incite racial tensions. Many can see that something isn't right in America, and some even acknowledge we are in the end of days. Yet, according to scripture, what we are seeing is leading up to the beginning of sorrows and we have yet to enter the fullness of the great tribulation to come. If we look at uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 3 to 8, to get edification on what's happening here in these times. Please, Brother Zachary. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Here we are, even us, want to understand what's the signs. How shall we know when it's the end? And let's see what our Lord says. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And this has been going on for a long time. You can actually Google the list of people that have said they are Christ and have led people astray. So we already have things to show us that we're getting there, but we're not there yet to the end, that is. Continue, please. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. This is even happening now. There are wars like India and China just had a war at the Himalayan border. There's tension there, and then there's tension between China and America in the South China Sea. China doesn't appreciate the drills that America is running in the South China Sea. And we know through prophecy why America is in the South China Sea. They're trying to get angle to be able to attack Iran in time of war. Also, Iran is preparing for war with America. They just had drills, it was here recently in the Strait of Hormuz, Iran, they blew up a prop U.S. naval ship. They blew it up in the Strait of Hormuz, which caused the U.S. Uh, bases there in the Middle East area to be on high alert. So you can see there's wars and there's rumors of war. People are plotting and preparing to fight with each other. You even have um, Greece. They are having tensions with Turkey in the East Mediterranean over control of that area. They're trying to control the resources there. And Italy and France is backing Greece in this effort. And it's no surprise because Italy, France, Greece, these are part of the Ten Horns. So it's no misunderstanding as to why they're supporting each other. So we see these rumors of wars and hearing of wars is happening. Yet, even though these things are going on, what does our Lord tell us to do? You continue, please, brother. Don't forget Syria. Um, oh, Syria. Syria. 
Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah. All right, so you have Syria. That involved, what, Russia, Turkey, America, um, Jordan and Israel are having problems. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because there was something I neglected to say because there was another issue going on. Sweden. Sweden was doing some exercises in the Baltic to show Russia that, you know, they're not afraid of them. And uh, you have the Taliban is still in Afghanistan and we know who's behind the Taliban. They're still trying to push the Afghans. They actually just had a little ceasefire for um, one of the, the Islamic days, but they're still having issues there. So there's definitely much wars and rumors of wars going on here in the earth still. Mm -hmm. Yet with all these things going on, let's see what Yache admonishes us to do. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. So that's what we're admonished to do. Be not troubled. This is nothing for us to fear. Let's continue to see why should we not be troubled as he, he gives us a good reason not to be troubled because, yeah, brother, you have an opportunity. Well, all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The end is not yet. We have to see these things. This is just letting us know the times we are heading into, but the end, we're not there yet. All right. Um, what else are we going to be seeing for us to understand what's coming here so we can know what times we're in? Uh, continue when you have opportunity, please. A nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. This key sign, nation has to rise against nation. So firstly, there's going to be racial tension because nations represent actual races in the earth. There's going to be racial tension, and then there's going to be kingdom tension. As kingdoms, speaking of countries, different dominions are going to rise up against each other. And us being here in America, for those that are in America, can see this coming. You have the racial issues that are going on here in the country. Here recently, the young man got shot in Wisconsin, and then another man shot some people during the protesting so you can see that these racial tensions are rising in the country and it's all a part of prophecy and it hasn't even come to its fullness yet because they haven't risen up to completely fight against each other as yet yet it's coming and kingdoms are also rising against kingdoms even though it hasn't gotten to its fullness yet we have for example america is preparing for war with Iran. And we see the drills that Iran are doing in preparation for war with America. And other countries, like I mentioned earlier, Greece doing exercises in the Mediterranean, along with Turkey, not being afraid to get into a war with them. So everything is coming along as prophecy foretold. We also have more to come to let us know that we're drawing near to the end times. Can you continue, please, brother? And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And these are things to come. Yeah, they're, they're having famines in the lands already. People are struggling. There are sicknesses going on. And there are earthquakes in diverse places. These things have been going on for a while. And it's only going to increase. Yet, all the things we're seeing now, according to Yache, what does he say all this is pertaining to? He said in verse 8 that all these are the beginning of sorrows. We haven't actually hit the fullness of the great tribulation. This is just the beginning. The racial tensions building up here in America must first come to incite nation to rise against nation. And after will follow kingdom against kingdom. It's happening all around the world amongst others too. As these things increase, it's going to be the beginning of sorrows as we are leading into the fullness of the Great Tribulation. The racial war in America will be a sign to the world of the beginning of sorrows we are in. And these troubles are going to affect the whole world. And when that race war kicks off, the scriptures tell of 
how things will be. In Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 14, it reads, Woe to the world and to them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. So you see, the first sign of this destruction to come is people standing up against another with swords in their hands. Is people going to be fighting against each other with weapons? Verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. What we're going to see in due time, people are going to start blocking off cities and areas and counting it as their own. They're taking dominion over the territory, and you won't be able to just enter in because that's their stronghold. And this is all going to come because of the pride. It says in verse 18, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. As we can see, destroying people's property. And for those who are not fighters or into that type of thing, they're going to be in much fear in what is to come. Verse 18, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but they shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So you can see the cause of all this trouble where people are not going to have pity on their neighbor. The love of many is going to wax cold. They're going to be destroying each other's houses with the sword, with their weapons and taking their goods. What causes this is the lack of bread. This is showing that there's going to be a depression. People are going to lack the necessary resources, which is going to force them to start acting out on each other and taking things into their own hands, the survival of the fittest, so to speak. And that beginning of sorrows is going to come. The start of it or the source of it is going to be because of the lack of bread. That's why we discuss that they're creating a depression to bring the people to the point of depression where they have nothing. And that is going to bring about the war here amongst the people. And all this is giving us understanding of this great tribulation to come and it's going to ensue here in America. That depression has been created methodically will deplete people of their resources to lead them to destroy each other in the great tribulation. They're still bringing it about step by step, piece by piece, implementing things to help bring the people down, take away the jobs, take away the resources, and then as the people suffer and see what's really going on, it's going to be a real eye opener for a lot of people. And in time, that struggle, that conflict among the people, among the races here will come. So these things that are coming, this struggle is going to affect everyone in America, having their houses ran into being having their goods taken, you know, not being able to enter from one city to another, having to band up in the gangs and militia groups in order to protect themselves from the other groups. All this is going to befall anyone who remains in America. Also, in the time to come, Israel specifically will be purged of the unbelievers around the world in these end times. We are seeing that the children of Israel are already being afflicted here in America more than any place on television, that is, where we've seen they're getting shot unjustly and things like that. But what's to come here, not only in America, but also around the world, is going to get worse for the children of Israel, according to prophecy. When we look at Jubilee chapter 23, verse 23 to 24, it tells of what's going to befall the children of Israel. In Jubilees 23, verse 22 to 24, it reads, And a great punishment will befall the deeds of this generation from Ahiah. And he will give them over to the sword and to judgment and to captivity. 
and to be plundered and devoured. Notice this judgment will befall the children of Israel because of the deeds of this generation, because of our iniquities. This is why this destruction is coming upon us. Verse 23. And he will wake up against them, the sinners of the Gentiles, who have neither mercy nor compassion, and who will respect the person of none, neither old nor young, nor anyone. For they are more wicked and strong to do evil than all the children of men. So this is where Ahai is going to wake up the sinners of the Gentiles against the Israelites. And it doesn't matter who you are. There's no respect for age or, or youth or wealth or gender. This attack is on the Israelites entirely. This will be a time that will differentiate who the Israelites are because it's going to be very evident who's being attacked. And it's also going to help see that it's not merely one nation that's going to destroy the Israelites, but it's the sinners of the Gentiles that are going to be destroying the Israelites. While in the midst of these times, the believers of the Israelites and the Gentiles will be protected through their faith and their good works in which they believe, according to scripture as well. Continuing understanding what's going to befall the children of Israel as they're being plundered and devoured, verse 23 goes on to say, speaking of the sinners of the Gentiles, for they are more wicked and strong to do evil than all the children of men. And they will use violence against Israel and transgression against Jacob. And much blood will be shed upon the earth. And there will be none to gather and none to bury. And we see that the attack is on the Israelites that's coming. It's going to be to destroy them because that's the power that's been given unto the beast to overcome the saints. This is what the prophecies show will happen. And in verse 24, it goes on to say, in those days, they will cry aloud. This is speaking of the children of Israel. They will cry aloud and call and pray that they may be saved from the hand of the sinners, the Gentiles. But none of them will be saved. Because these Israelites that are being killed, these are the sinners of the children of Israel. This is what must be fulfilled because Ahiah foretold. In Amos chapter 9, verse 10, he said, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil should not overtake nor prevent us. So all the Israelites who believe that there's no harm that will come to them, though they are not doing what Ahiah said to do, not bearing the fruits of the Spirit and not keeping the commandments and believing on the name Yahweh, the only name when we may be saved, all the people of this nation of Israel shall die in these times to come who did not work the righteousness of Allah through faith. Yet, for those of the children of Israel that believe and do that which is good in the sight of Allah they shall feel no evil. As it says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5, it says, Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. That's why we're called to be wise, to be circumspect in this time, to know the time frame we're in, for these days are evil. Therefore, it's essential for us to keep the commandments, to bear the fruits of the Spirit, to believe on the name Yacha, because this time we're in. If we do these things, no evil shall touch us. I already foretold. We went to Ezra and saw the trouble that's coming. Ahiah also, after explaining to Ezra the trouble that's coming, he gave testimony of how he would protect us if we do his will. In 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 74 to 76, and it reads, Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith Ahiah, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Allah is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith Ahaya, Allah Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift themselves up. So we encourage and know that we have a guide if we keep the commandments and precepts of our Allah
and we are to be focused and encouraged to let not our sins weigh us down. So the former things that we've did, don't let that guilt keep us from moving forward, but believing that we have a sacrifice, we have an atonement through our Lord Yache to clear our conscience so that we can go forward and sin no more. Knowing that it's him working in us and increasing in us, giving us that joy, knowing that it's him saving us from ourselves. So we don't, we're not to let our sins wear us down. And also we have to keep our bodies in subjection and not let our iniquities lift themselves up, lest we be cast away. So this is our encouragement, knowing what's coming in these times. Continuing with this understanding, knowing all this, We must prepare ourselves for the battle within us. Yache testified the way is narrow and we have to deny ourselves to enter into the kingdom. In Matthew chapter seven, verse 13 to 14, he said, enter ye at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat. For it's easy to fall into destruction. There's many paths, there's many ways. And in what he's saying, he tells how the reason there are many ways to go therein, to the way of destruction, in verse 14, he tells, is because straight is the gate and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So the difficulty and straightness of what it takes to reach unto the kingdom to enter into the gate of Yache is the reason why many are turning towards the gate of destruction because that's the easy route. Whereas the route that we are called onto is hard and it takes work. It takes self-sacrifice. It takes putting on our cross and following after our Lord. But this is the journey that we must embark on for this is the only way to save our life. Yache said in Matthew 16 and 24 and verse 25, then said Yache unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Hopefully we understand what he's saying here. This is the opportunity that's before us. He said in Matthew 7, entering at the straight gate, the gate is himself. As we read in the last lesson about being saved, that the gate, the new gate was Yache, who came in the end of the world. So the gate is Yache that we must enter into. And in Matthew 6, he tells out, if you will come after him, if we're going to go towards that gate, we have to deny ourselves first. We have to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. So it first comes with, the choice of not wanting to be who we were through our worldly lust, putting on that cross, endeavoring into that affliction within us as we change. I should say, as we're being changed by him and his light in us. This is the journey that we have to go on to follow him because he also suffered unto obedience that he may be perfected and we must do the same. When he goes on to say, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. If we try to keep any of our former ways, any of our former lusts, things that were not pleasing to our life, we're going to lose our life. That's the simplicity of the gospel. We have to become a whole new creature made perfect through the righteousness of Allah. And that's why if we lose our life, and have the fullness of Christ our Lord Yache formed in us, then we shall save it. He gave a parable telling us, if we don't die to ourselves by purging from within, by the fruit of the Spirit, we will not enter into the kingdom. We're going to jump to Luke chapter 13, verse 23 through 30. Luke chapter 13, verse 23. Then said yes. one unto him, Lord, are there a few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. 
when once the master of the house is risen up and have shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not what ye are. This is where Yahche is risen up and he shuts the door to enter into the kingdom. And we'll be there thinking that we had believed on him, thinking that we will work in righteousness and doing what he said to do. But his response to say he didn't know us will prompt us to say things of this nature. Continue, please. Then shall you begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Because we were still sinning. That shows the outward show means nothing if we're still working iniquity. Because these things were outward. It seemed good eating and drinking in his presence. We, we thought we were keeping the feast days, but it wasn't in righteousness. We thought we were teaching in the streets, but it wasn't in righteousness. Iniquity was still in our hearts because Allah Hayyam seeth in secret and he rewardeth openly. This is why there's such a focus to focus on within and overcoming the things that men can't see so that the light of Christ may shine in us, that men may see it. Continue, please. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of Allah and you yourself thrust out. This is what will befall us. This is what will come if we don't take the time to bear the fruit from within, to put on those holy spirits that we had discussed in the last lesson. We don't want to be the ones wailing and gnashing our teeth, knowing that it's too late for us. Continue, please. And they shall come from the east and from the west, and from the north, and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of Allah. And there, see, the Gentiles are going to enter in, while the children of Israel, who trusted just the fact that we were Abraham's seed, but did not work the fruits of Abraham's children, were going to be cast out. Continue, please. And behold, there are lies we shall be first. And there are first, we shall be last. Now, oh, this difficulty that set before us, the angel, I think it was Uriel, that spoke with Ezra. He told Ezra of the difficulty that set before men, so that we may understand this battle that we are in for our souls. Uh, can you read Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 1 to 14, please? Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 1. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the night before. And he said unto me, Up, Edris, and hear the words that I come to tell thee. And I said, Speak on, my Allah. Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that I might be deep and great. But put the case the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, could he come into the broad? It's very straightforward what he's explaining the examples, so we see very clearly what we're facing here. Continue, please. There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. So there you see, that's how narrow this way is unto Yahche. That's the straightness of this walk, to walk the path of Yahche. That's why we can't turn to the right hand nor to the left from the will of Allah in the fruits of his spirit and the commandments that his mouth has given us. Continue, please. And one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, 
so right. small that there could be one man go there at once. That is a good understanding of what he's saying. It's so small that only one man can go at once. Each person has to work out their salvation for themselves. We can't make another person want it or make another person get there. Each person has to have that choice within themselves to go forward. Believing on Yache and walk in his path. That's why we are all encouraged to be examples of believers and let our behavior set an example for another to see the way that they may see Yache and follow him. Because he is that narrow and straight and only path that we all have to take. Continue, please. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? How can we? If we don't go through the struggle to get to that inheritance set forth for us, how can we attain? How can we get it? Continue, please. And I said, It is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. This is the fight that the children of Israel have to go through. We discussed earlier how this attack, this destruction to come, is the attack is focused on the children of Israel. Jubilee is told that the sinners of the Gentiles are going to use violence against Israel and transgression against Jacob. All the sinners of Israel, according to Amos, are going to be destroyed by the sword. So you have this great tribulation without, and then also the fight of overcoming oneself within to put on the cross of Christ that we have to go through in order that we may get that inheritance in the promised seed, Christ our Lord. This is the journey we all have to go through. And why is this Israel's portion? Why do the children of Israel have to go through this? Continue, please, in verse 11. Because for their sakes, I made the world. This is Ahaya's purpose. Continue, please. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now was done. Notice why things are the way it is. Adam had first transgressed the statutes, and that also lets us know law had always existed. Adam. The first man was given statutes. There always was a commandment. There were always laws to be kept of Allah. And now that Adam has fell, things have gotten difficult for us all. The only way to undo what was done is to do what's right. That's why Yache came doing everything perfect and no sin was found in him, no guile in his mouth, so that he could undo what Adam did. And we, being the Adams of our own soul, having our own opportunity to choose, have to undo that same thing, the same error that was made in the beginning by doing everything right through Christ Yache to be delivered, even as he was delivered from death. Continue, please, brother. Then were the interests of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. All due to transgression. Now we can understand why. Not only was the entrances into the kingdom made narrow, full of travail and sorrow through Adam's transgression, we can also understand why we have gone through so much in our lives. It's through our transgressions. This is why the world is the way it is. It's through iniquity. Continue, please. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure. And brought immortal fruit. And the elder world is speaking of before Adam sinned. He said it was wide and sure because all Adam was doing was obeying Ahia's voice. He had the statues that he was given and he was just walking and he didn't know evil. He had no concept of it. So to get back to that, it's through faith, it's through obedience. To get back to that wide and sure way. And hopefully that helps. Us, as we've been seeing how difficult things are in this world, hopefully we see how when we have a change of mind, 
that renewing of our mind in Christ Yache, now we can see the wideness, the surety, and the goodness of the fruits that await us in this path, in this narrow way through Yache Christ. Uh, continue, please. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. We have to go through it. We have to go through the straightness. And we have to go through this vain world, this vain life, to receive those things that are laid up, our heavenly bodies, the heavenly kingdom. This is the journey and the battle is set before us all. Can you jump to 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 42? We're going to read 42 to 70, please. 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 42. He answered me and said, This present life is not the end, where much glory doeth abide. And that's why we have to go through these vain things, because this present life isn't the glory that we're seeking. All right, continue, please. Therefore, have they prayed for the weak. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time, and the beginning of the immortality for to come, wherein corruption is past. Right. And temperance is at an end, infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that hath gotten the victory. All right. This is speaking of the kingdom. If I'm not mistaken, this is after Yache's reign. Right. There's the kingdom of Christ and there's the kingdom of Allah Hayim. This is after the kingdom of Christ thousand year reign when the kingdom of Allah Hayim comes and all corruptible things are perished. The only immortal shall exist. Continue, please. I answered then and said, This is my first and last saying, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam or else when it was given him to have restrained him from sinning. For what profit is it for men now in this present time to live in heaviness and after death to look for punishment? This is true. This is true. What's there to gain? Going through all this trouble in life to end up dying and then suffering right after. Continue, please. O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, for we all that come of thee. Continue, please. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us in immortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring death? And that there is promise us an everlasting hope, whereas ourselves, being most wicked, are made vain. Continue, please. And that there are laid up for us the dwellings of health and safety, whereas we have lived wickedly. And that the glory of the Most High is kept to defend them which have led a weary life, whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways of all. This is all things to consider. Continue, please. And that there should be showed a paradise whose fruit endures forever, wherein is security and medicine, since we shall not enter into it. For we have walked in unpleasant places, and that the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars, whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. For while we live and committed iniquity, we consider it not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. This is the mindset the world leads us in, to think there's nothing to come, there's no suffering to come after death, but that it's just bliss. But According to the creator of all, 
for our iniquities that our torments that await us. And this is things we have to consider. Continue, please. Then answered ye me and said, This is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight, that if he be overcome, he shall suffer, thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I said. And that's what's before us. This is the battle that we are in. It's fair. It's righteous. If we be overcome, we we'll suffer. But if we overcome, we we'll receive what Ahaya said. And we should have courage and, and joy knowing that this is not a fight that we're fighting on our own. We have an advocate. We have the Lord Yache who fights for us, prays for us, who speaks in us, who works in us to build us up unto his full stature that we may receive what the Father has in store. Continue, please. For this is the life where Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. And now we see that this was foretold in the law. This battle has been spoken of of all, and now we just are being given the understanding of it. Choose life that we may live. Continue, please. Nevertheless, they believed him not, nor yet the prophets after him. No, nor me, which has spoken unto them. We've not listened for a long time. You see, we've struggled with hearkening for a long time. Hopefully for us now, seeing all that we've been through, reading the scriptures and knowing in our own lives, hopefully now, may I have be gracious to open our ears, to hear and our eyes to see, to make the right choice and come out on the right side of this battle. Continue, please. That there should not be such heaviness in their destruction, as shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. Notice the joy that's going to be over them that are persuaded to salvation. The ones that believe. And we're persuaded by the words of the testimonies. We're persuaded by seeing what Yache is doing in our lives. Seeing how coming to know the name Yache and then noticing the change that's happening within us. This persuades us to believe that we shall be saved. This persuades us unto joy, knowing that his word is true and that he does exist. He's real. And he's creating change in us. And he's making us a new creature by his own strength, which the Father has imputed unto him. This is what persuades us unto the salvation. This is the life that we're choosing through faith. May we be encouraged. May we be encouraged to do so in the midst of all that's coming and that is going on even now. So, continue, please. I answered then and said, I know, Lord, that the Most High is called merciful, and that he hath mercy upon them which are not yet come into the world, and upon those that turn to his law. Where is the mercy upon? Those that turn to his law. He's long suffering unto all his creatures because he's a lover of souls. But his mercy to save them is unto those that turn to his law. Continue, please. And that he is patient and long suffers those that have sinned as his creatures. So that's where we see, even when we were in our iniquities and being even now brought out of our iniquities as we die daily, we see why we're still here, why we still have the opportunity, because Ahaya is long-suffering and patient, because we are his creation. He also wants us to make that change. He has no pleasure in the death of him that died. Uh, continue, please. And that he is bound to but he is ready to give where it's needed. He wants to give us the fruits. He wants to give us what's needed for our salvation. We just have to come unto him with our whole heart. Continue, please. 
and that he is of great mercy. For he multiplies more and more mercies to them that are present and that are past, and also to them which are to come. He is gracious. Continue, please. But if he shall not multiply his mercies, the world would not continue with them that inherit their land. And he pardoned it. But if he did not so of his goodness, that they which have committed iniquities might be eased of them, the ten thousand part of men should not remain living. Now we understand why so much iniquity in the world and we're still here. It's through his pardon, through his mercy, as he long suffers with us in hopes that we'll change out of his great love which he had toward the world. Continue, please. And being judged, if he should not forgive them that are cured with his word and put out the multitude of contentions, there should be very few left per adventure in an innumerable multitude. Notice, he's the judge of all. That's why we don't judge, lest we be judged. And he forgives those that are cured with his word. This is why the preaching of faith, the preaching of the gospel, the preaching of Yahweh Christ, this is healing unto the nations. This is that living water, the living word that's cleansing the world and delivering us from our sins to give Ahaya reason to forgive us of our sins by believing on the word of the faith of his son and that puts out the multitude of contentions because the adversary can't contend against us he can't lay reproach against us when we have faith in yache because we believe on the only begotten son and we're patiently and in an honest and good heart working out that salvation not turning away but continuing to grow thereby through the faith in his name and the learning that he's teaching us in his doctrine. And if it wasn't for this, there would only be few, as Ezra testifies. And let's continue in Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 1 to 4, to see the response of the Most High. Continue, please. Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 1. And he answered me, saying, The Most High has made this world for many, but the world to come for few. All right. I will tell thee a similar to Edris. As when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee, that it giveth much mound, whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of. There be many created, but few shall be saved. I already knew what would come. He already knew. And when Ezra's heard that, even as we hear this now, only few shall be saved. What is needful for us to do then, knowing that this is the case? Can you read the next verse, please? So answered I and said, Swallow then down, O my soul, understanding, and devour wisdom. That's the key. Knowing that it's only few is key to get understanding and wisdom now. Because we want to be counted in the number of those that be saved. We need to understand the wisdom of Allah in his knowledge to attain unto the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge so that we may be saved. We are encouraged to prepare our hearts and endure these temptations as well. Knowing what is before us, he reads Sirach, or also known as Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 1 to 7, please. Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul to temptation. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Believe unto him. And depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help thee. 
Order thy way aright and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. And these admonitions keep us, give us guidance on how to go through this trial before us. And in the midst of these trials, it's needful for us to continue in it with patience and temperance because this is what we're called unto and it's pleasing in the sight of Allah Hayyam for us to endure these trials with joy. Let's jump to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19 to 25, please. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. For this is thank worthy. If a man put conscience toward Allah and go grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with Allah. For even hereunto were ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. For when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. We're dead to sins. Uriyache, to live unto righteousness. This is why we go forward and sin no more. This is why we go forward looking for his mercy that he gives to those that turn unto his law. And we're persuaded because we heard the word of faith. We heard the word that cures. And that has persuaded us unto salvation. This is the direction we're headed into. Knowing that we'll be delivered, even though this path is narrow and very tumultuous, yet through our new mindset, we see it as wide and sure and full of immortal fruit. This is the mind that we have for the opportunity before us. I'll continue, please. By whose stripes you were healed? For you were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Let's get some more admonitions from Peter of how we are to go forward in this hope and calling of our Lord. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 through 18, please. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrariwise blessing. Knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit the blessing. Amen. For he that will love life and see good days, let him restrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? If we do the will of Allah, the fruits will always deliver us. We've seen it through the apostles. They were delivered in many instances. Peter delivered from the prison. Paul delivered from his different tribulations. And the fruits of the Spirit can deliver us. Keeping the faith, believing, keeping the commandments, these will deliver us. As opposed to taking things into our own hands, getting involved in the lust of the flesh, getting angry, getting frustrated, or even getting bitter about what's going on. These things open our vessels up to be defiled within, and also for trouble to come to us without. Uh, continue, please. 
But and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are you. See, no one will want to trouble us, but if we are troubled, let's be happy because we're suffering for righteousness' sake. Continue, please. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord our high in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Amen. Having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, that they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you of good conversation in Christ. Notice when we do what's right, this is where these scriptures keep us. If we're not doing the right things, we don't fall under this category. All right? So we have to make sure we're doing actions according to the good conversation in Christ, the good lifestyle or behavior in Christ. All right, continue, please. For it is better if the will of our highest be so, that you suffer for well doing than for evil doing. All right, not for doing wrong. <laughs> we want to be doing the right thing and suffer for it. All right, continue, please. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, and just for the unjust, that he might bring us to our highest, being put to death in the flesh. Quicken by the spirit. Uh, I wanted to touch on something before we went ahead. Um, yes, please. A lot of people, and I just have to speak it straightly because this is people's souls on the line. Uh, there's a lot of people that are self righteous, not examining themselves with the scriptures and the law and the fruits of the spirit. And the first thing they want to say is that the devil's attacking them when something happens. And I, I want to call that out because people's souls on the line. Mm -hmm. So please, if, if, if that is a fault that you have personally, please examine yourself with the law. Examine yourself by the fruits of the spirit. Examine yourself by the works of the flesh. And be truthful with yourself. And truly see where you fall in this scenario. So this is a life or death situation. Especially the time that we're going into now. Thank you. Praise the Let's continue on to 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 12 through 19, please. All right. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So this trial that's coming is not something to go into sorrow about, like, oh, I'm being afflicted. Why are all these things happening to me? Or to think I'm the only one that this is happening to. But rather, actually, the right mindset is to come with joy, knowing that um, this is what must come to pass so that I may partake in Christ's suffering. This is how we get to partake in what he went through, being afflicted within ourselves. And that's our joy, knowing that when his glory shall be revealed, we'll be glad with exceeding joy because we made it. He's brought us there. So to help us have the right mindset in the midst of this all. Continue, please. First uh, Peter 4 and 12 is the woe is me. Yes, you saw it, right? Yeah. Like, God, God, please. It's like, why is it happening to me? Why? You know, right. instead of instead of counting it as a blessing to your trial, that the fire is actually purging you and strengthening you. It's, why? Why me? Why is this happening? Why do I have to go through this? And we, we fall into complaining, not understanding the grand scheme of things. 
So you have to really get out of that complaining spirit and actually see the good in all things. And that's actually an evil spirit that's actually worn in you to complain about things all the time when things don't go the way that you want them to go. So you have to be admonished and be aware not to let that spirit control us and take hold on us, but to look at all things in the sort of spirit and joy. Take it all in joy. First Peter 4 and 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of Elohim resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. So let us not get reproach for work in iniquity. Right. Let us get reproach for work in righteousness. That's joyful. That's praiseworthy, but not for doing the things that are contrary to Ahaya's will. So let's not let our joy be taken away through faith. Stay in that joy of Christ. Continue, please. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Right. Suffering for well-doing, that's the Christian way to suffer. That's what we're called unto. Let's suffer for being loving, suffering for being patient. All right, suffering for not reacting the way we used to react. Let's suffer within ourselves doing that. Overcoming, that's how we suffer as Christians, so that we won't be ashamed in the day of Christ's coming. But let him glorify Allah on this behalf. All right. So let it not be in word only, but also in deed. Not just that Allah is good, you know, praise the Lord, praise Yahche, praise Aya, you know, but also let your deeds amount to the words. Be long suffering, be patient. Don't say praise Aya, praise Yahche, and then as soon as somebody does something wrong to you, you go into a tantrum. Or you wig out. So that Alahayim is informed in you. So you have to be true believers, true Christians, not just Christians in word, but Christians in truth. Thank you. First Peter 4 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Elohim? So children of Israel, Peter is speaking directly to the children of Israel. This is where judgment is beginning at the house of Elohim. We have to obey the gospel. And we have to set an example so that the nations can have opportunity to come unto Allah. We have to set an example for all. This is our calling, right? Do all things to other men's conscience. Consider the nations and have compassion for them and make sure to set a good example for them. Continue, please. But if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the un and the sinner appear? This is touching back on Ezra, and many are going to perish because many were created, but the next world to come is actually for few. And knowing these things, this is why our compassion is increased to do us right, so that as many as possible can have an example of Christ in their life. Continue, please. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of Elohim commit the keeping of their souls to him and well-doing, 
as unto a faithful creator. And that's how we commit our souls unto Allah Hayyam. It's through well-doing. We are in his hands through well-doing. That's our faith. And that's our understanding and our, our, our approach to this thing. He'll keep us so long as we do well. Gird ourselves. Let us gird ourselves to fight through the temperance. Lest any emotions spring up and lead us astray. We'll go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11 to 15, please. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. Now no chastening, for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Now that's very important to understand. It doesn't seem joyous going through this chasing and getting shown everything we're doing wrong. Always finding out something else that we have to grow in. Always finding out something else that we weren't doing right. It doesn't seem joyous. Yet, if we stick it out, if we continue with a good heart and be patient and be exercised by it. Notice he said it and being exercised thereby. We're getting strengthened. Just like you strengthen a muscle, you have to keep working it and it hurts. And then it gets bigger. It's the same way. We're being strengthened through seeing our faults. The spirit of Yachi is growing in us more and more. And we're getting stronger in the faith. That's why he says, nevertheless, afterwards. So after you do all this working out, we be being short our faults. It's going to yield a peaceable fruit of righteousness. So this is important for us to stick it out. Though it may not seem joyful, stick it out because in due time, we're going to see fruit come from it as we continue in this exercise, in this journey. Uh, and knowing this, what does he say next? Know what's to come if you stick it out. Continue, please. Wherefore, lift up the hands that's hang down and the feeble knees. That's why praise Ahaya, get up, be joyful, give thanks because you know what's coming. Continue, please. And make straight paths for your feet. Least that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. All right. So make straight paths for your feet. So you make straight paths by finding the way of righteousness. Look for the right way to walk in. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Lest if you stay in your sorrow and that woe is me mindset, you're going to fall to the left and to the right because you're not approaching in the right way. If we make a mistake and start looking, woe is me, and I can't get it right, we're not looking at the straight path that we're supposed to walk in. We're not looking forward, pressing toward the mark, so we're going to fall into the fire on the left and the water on the right. You see how all the things tie into each other. But rather, let it be healed. How is it healed? It's cured by the word that Ezra spoke about. So now we know we mess up. Okay, thank you for showing me. What's the right thing to do? Go find healing. Find the scripture to understand what we should have done right. That's the straight way. Let's stand up. Let not our knees wax feeble and walk straight forward into that. This is the process that we're in. Continue, please. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. So that direct commandment to the Hebrews, to the children of Israel, follow peace with all men without which we won't be able to see the Lord. All right, continue, please. Looking diligently, does any man fail of the grace of our iron? That lets us know if we fall away from the path of holiness, we're falling out of grace. We've heard the word of the gospel now. We have the name Yache. We're being taught of the commandments and the fruits of the spirit. That's our direction unto holiness. If we fall away from this, we're falling away from the grace of Allah Hayyam. Continue, please. At least any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Now, putting this into context to today, we're seeing the things that are going on in America does more so than any place with what's happening to the children of Israel being killed and the unjust system of America and all these things. We're supposed to follow peace with all men. We have to be very mindful lest any bitterness spring up in us due to what's happening in the world. And we get defiled. So to put it into modern day, what's going on right now, we have to guard ourselves not to be defiled by the spirit of bitterness. 
by the spirit of resentment or anger towards what's going on. Yes. But understanding what the Yachay say to do when people were dying, even in his day, he said, except ye repent, ye shall also likewise perish. So when we see what's happening, our reaction is to repent, continue working in faith, to be encouraged more like we see it's coming. Let us focus on ourselves. Let's get it together. And to stay in the spirit of compassion towards the person that's been hurt and the person that hurt the person. It's an interesting thing because you you fall into the spirit of hatred, seeing all the things that's happening to the Israelites in America. And, and I'm just saying, for instance, for instance, you fall into hatred with all the things that's going on in America, like right? the inequality towards the, the Israelites and whatnot. But you have to also look at the spectrum that not all Israelites are good people. And then you have to look at the perspective that not all Edomites or other nations are bad people. So where does that leave you? It leaves you in hypocrisy if you go into hatred. Because you can't say that you never met an Israelite who wasn't a good person. And you can't say that you met all Edomites that were bad people, or all people from other nations that were bad people. So it leaves you at a point where, where does your hatred lie? What are you mad at? We know the government system is corrupt, and that's throughout the whole world. So that just doesn't tie to America even though the things that are happening in America are in America. All nations are on the same page or else somebody would have came to deliver us. Psalms 83 shows that the nations, are all the government nations are against us. Just like when slavery happened, there was nobody who came and tried to deliver us from slavery. It's the same now. So, in the broad spectrum, one would be mad at the whole world. And that's a bitterness that you don't want to go into because where's the end of the bitterness? You fall into a ditch that you can't get out of it. Instead of putting on the fruits of the spirit of joy and love and peace. Because your hatred isn't going to solve anything. Tearing up stuff, it's not going to solve anything. What peace has become of people rioting in the streets? I haven't seen anything but more people dying. And I'm not speaking based off of my own perception. I'm literally speaking of what's happening. Sure. So, it's only furthering. Right. It's only furthering the evil. Because initially the people didn't get shot while they were protesting. And now it's gone to the point where people are getting shot by other civilians. It's only increasing strife. It's only increasing. And the police are gonna let them do it. Absolutely. There's less paperwork for the police. Less police looking like the bad guy. Yes. So, see that hatred is not the way. Hatred is encompassing of bitterness, uh, anger, resentment, grudging, just being disgruntled. This is not the way to overcome what's before us and what's going on in the world. 
as Christ, he didn't come in that spirit. He came in the spirit of love and compassion to overcome the world. And that's what we're called on to. And in the midst of it all, let our joy be increased. Understanding who is fighting for us and fighting in us to deliver us from ourselves and the troubles that we're facing without. Can we read James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4? James chapter 1 verse 2. My brother encountered all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work with patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So let's continue with good and honest heart and patience as she's being perfected in us, knowing that the Holy Spirit's working in us, leading us unto the glory of Yache, gives us reason to glory in the trials that we face here now and to come. Can you read Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, please? Romans chapter 5, verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Amen. Knowing that tribulation works with patience. And patience, right. experience, and experience hope. All right. Through the patience and enduring each trial, we're getting experience. We're growing. Now we're, we're getting used to working righteousness now. Instead of working in iniquity, we're getting used to do the good thing, getting used to responding in meekness. And that gives us hope because we now we're getting to see the change. We're like, yeah, I've experienced doing this now. I've actually done the right thing instead of what I used to do. That increases our hope because we're getting to see evidence of Yacha increasing in us. And that hope leads us where? Continue, please. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of our hand is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. And that's why we have no shame. Because we have evidence of the Spirit working in us. And then you have, through your experience, you see that it actually works. You know, like, whoa, it worked. Amen. I got a totally different reaction than what I did, but than what I got before, you know. Right. So, so with that, let us be encouraged in this journey. I hope this was edifying and encouraging in these times and help give understanding of what's going on and, and what we need to be doing in these times. All right. If anybody has any questions, please send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com. So I'm T'Challa, Brother Hanus. I'm T'Challa, Sister Emma. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can please send an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. You can also visit the website. There should be a link in the description. We definitely apologize for the audio. We're trying new equipment and we're trying to see what works. Um, but I will deliver it in this appointed time. So uh, we just thank you all for bearing with us. Uh, Brother Kafu, you have anything? Yahaya keep us, man. Yahaya be with us and Yahaya be with you all as well to keep us through his son and through that mighty name, Yache, for the salvation of the world. HRC, 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 Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church. 